Let's talk about the validity of research designs. Now, what do I mean by validity? I mean, is it trustworthy? Can we say that, yeah, this probably means something? Just because somebody has done some scientific research doesn't mean that we should believe it because we bring all kinds of biases into our research. We bring all kinds of uh, uh, weaknesses that make us that may lower the validity and the likelihood that a study is true. I'd like to start off by looking at a couple quotes here. The first one is by Francis Bacon. He lived about 1600 and he was kind of like the the father of modern science and this idea of empiricism and that we uh, um, uh, need to uh, get get data. The, the father of a uh, uh, the scientific method, the idea that we should be able to repeat something and get the same results. He's also the, the guy who said that we need to be really aware of the biases that we bring to any study. The self-awareness will make us better thinkers. And the quotation that I have here is that man prefers to believe what he prefers to be true. So if we want something to be true, we're going to uh, tend to believe the evidence for it more than we're going to believe the evidence against it. That's one of the biases that we bring into uh, uh, any uh, critical thinking that we do. Now, we'd like to think we're not biased, but realistically, we are. We can't evaluate all of the facts perfectly, and um, we, we bring in a lot of feelings and pre-assumed uh, uh, beliefs that influence our, our thinking. Now, if you follow my videos, you probably know that I'm a Christian, that in the sense that I want to follow Jesus Christ and do what he says that, that we should do because my life's been changed by him um, and I, I have faith in him. Um, uh, Blaise Pascal, who was a famous mathematician in the mid-1600s, so a little after Francis Bacon, and he, uh, he did things like invent the first uh, calculating machine, he invented probability, just a brilliant guy, but he had a radical conversion, kind of like my radical conversion. I didn't grow up a Christian, he didn't grow up a Christian, but he heard the gospel and what Jesus did on the cross for him, and he gave his life over to Christ and it was totally changed. Um, he talked about the, the biases that we, we bring, and even when we think about God, we bring biases. He said, there's enough light for those who want to believe and enough shadows to blind those who don't. So God's revealed himself in a way that if we seek him out and we want to find him, we will. But he's hidden enough so that if you don't want to find him, you won't find him. He won't force himself upon, upon anybody. And so that's just kind of an interesting uh, link to uh, this idea of how our biases uh, influence the way that we uh, think. Well, I want to talk about two types of validity. External validity, which means outside of the design, outside of the research that we're doing, and internal validity, which refers to the actual design that we're doing inside of the design. So external validity is important because it's the degree to which the results of the study apply to the population that interests us. Like, okay, we do this study, we collect these data, does it apply to the outside world? We certainly hope so, otherwise it's not really worth uh, doing. So this is called external validity or generalizability. Can we generalize the results of our study to the outside world? Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. We can't know for sure, but there's some things that we can take into consideration. Um, and we say we look at the threats to external validity. What might be making it not externally valid? One is the sample might not be representative of the population. If we are stud, if we want to learn about uh, uh, senior leaders in a large organization, if we study uh, uh, teenagers working at McDonald's, we might not have the exact same phenomena going on there. 
So the sample needs to be representative of the population to the degree that's, that's possible, and sometimes more than others, if the phenomena is context dependent. Um, another threat to external validity is that the setting, the place, the materials, the, maybe the scenarios that we put in the survey aren't realistic. And if they aren't realistic and they don't re uh, represent real life things that people can relate to or understand, that's going to influence, this, influence people's uh, responses and might not reflect what would happen to uh, um, the, in, the, in the outside world. Another threat to external uh, validity is that the, the historical time or cultural context is different in the study and in the application. If I'm got some data from people in 18th century Spain, that might be a lot different than 21st century America, the way that they, uh, they respond. Um, now, most of the time you won't have things that extreme, but maybe a study from the 1950s it's no longer applicable to uh, uh, as we approach uh, the, the quarter mark of the 21st century. So those are some threats to external validity. So that limits the idea of generalizability to the outside world. But there's also threats to internal validity. That means, oh, did we design the, the study well to actually test the hypotheses? If we did, it's internally valid. If we didn't design it well, then it's got low internal validity. So what are some of the threats to internal validity? There's a lot of them. Um, one could be confounding variables, other independent variables that influence our dependent variable. And maybe those other uh, independent variables don't apply to all of the uh, participants, and so we get some weird correlations that are, are due to these uh, confounding variables. So we've talked about that before. Um, now, selection bias is also a, a threat to internal validity. Um, the people that participate in the survey might not accurately represent the population. If that's a, a threat of, uh, that's a danger with convenience sampling, is that you might have exceptionally nice friends who are polite and caring and, and really relationship oriented, and they want to help you out, so they fill out your survey. Whereas the typical people in the rest of the world, they might not be as nice and agreeable, and uh, the phenomena that are going on that you're recording your survey might not reflect. Um, uh, the, the the population that you're studying. So that's called selection bias when only a certain type of people participate in your study and not others. There's uh, also history effects. Something in the environment, such as a natural disaster or major news story, influences people during the testing. Um, I, uh, I did one study where data collection started around March 15th, 2020. That's, I, that was the weekend that everything was shutting down for the COVID epidemic. And I want to be pretty sure that that was on everybody's mind who, uh, uh, when we were filling out data. So that might have affected the validity of that study. And we need to be really clear when we, when we wrote it up that, whoa, this, this describes how people were thinking in a, term of, in a, during a time of crisis and, and fear which might be different how they were thinking uh, uh, at other times. So that's called a history effect when there's something, something in history that's, that's happening that's affecting people. Another effect is what's known as maturation effects. And this, this happens when you test people several times in an extended survey. Um, uh, so people advance in life, they start thinking about things differently. Um, Maybe even the simply the fact of filling out a survey several times uh, would would produce an effect. So if it's due to people growing normally, having more experience, it's a maturation effect. And if it's due to taking the same survey several times, we get a testing effect, and that can influence people's answers and threaten the internal validity. Now, a big one that you need to watch out is about is the instrument change. 
that means you use more than one version of your survey and that can turn into a disaster um, I remember one set of students they realized uh, uh, halfway through that one of their sentences one of their uh, Likert items was missing a word and it changed the sense completely and it was measuring something else and so they had to change the survey and they said oh can't we use the 150 surveys that we already collected nope because it was measuring something else and so uh if you uh use different versions of your survey that will lower its internal validity another uh danger to internal validity especially if it's a study that lasts for a while is what's known as differential attrition some type of people drop out of the study more than others so people that uh, stop caring about the study people that 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 are that get bored easily they might be uh, they'll drop out at a different rate than other people and that's also true for the completion of long surveys so lots of people will start surveys but if it's too long then they they'll stop uh, filling it out and probably people who are less conscientious that will stop filling it out and that might influence your results um there's also experimenter bias we we talked about that earlier we tend to see what we want to see and we even influence others to see what we want to see so in our description of the survey and our invites we need to try to be really neutral to not influence people on how we want them to uh to, to answer and also we need to have really clear hypotheses before we start the study and be clear on how we're going to analyze the data so that we don't go on what's known as a fishing expedition afterwards trying all kinds of different analyses until we get the the results that we want to get so that's that would be bringing experimenter bias into the results and finally there's the the hawthorne effect and that's simply we perform better when people pay attention to us so when we ask people uh, some things they might give socially desirable answers they if we watch how people work and get data how and people get data from people when they're uh, uh working they might be doing a better job uh than the, than they normal do and so normally do and so that would be a threat to internal validity so this is a brief overview of the validity of our research designs.